differentiation, right? Uh, or rather, a derivative. Okay. If you have a function like y equals x squared or something like that, okay, the derivative we would usually write that as dy on dx. Yes, this is all just old stuff, right? Now, that's just a shorthand way of actually writing gradient because that's what derivative gives you. It gives you the gradient function. Okay, so rise over run. Um, if you remember back to when we were doing first principles, okay. Uh, that D is like the delta in, um, in science. It means change, yeah? So change in Y, that's what we really mean by rise, like how far is something going up? And change in X is what we mean by run, how far is it going horizontally, okay? So if that's what the derivative is when you're looking at functions and graphs and all that kind of thing, um, then really, any time you compare two things that are changing, Okay? It doesn't have to be something going up and down and something going horizontally. It can be anything, right? Any time you compare two things that are changing, you've got a derivative. Okay? So as an example, let's have a look at the first question. Okay? Let's do a bit of um, a bit of decoding here. Okay? Because what you'll find is a lot of a lot of just trying to wrap your mind around these questions is just interpreting what it means. Okay? Water's pouring into a container so that the volume flow rate R equals dv on dt. Okay, stop, stop. I know the sentence isn't finished, but let's just try and work this out, okay? There's a flow rate, and they're calling it R, okay? But that R, another way of saying it, like flow rate, is dv on dt. Now, what does this mean, okay? Well, if dy on dx means how is y changing as x changes, okay? What do you guess this means? Yeah, um, change in volume, how much that's getting bigger or smaller, as time progresses, okay? Change in volume over change of time. That's a really important concept to get, by the way, so I, I suggest you write that. This is change in volume over change in time. Okay, so we're trying to compare these two, okay? And when you compare two things, what you're getting is a rate. Right? It's like this per this, uh, mils per hour, or cubic centimeters per second, or whatever it is. Okay. okay, it varies with the time according to the relation R equals KT squared. So now they're telling us that this R thing, right? They're giving us several names for the same thing, really. R, which is the same as dV or dT, that is KT, sorry, that's a K, KT squared. Where k is a constant. Okay. So now this this looks good. I've got a rate of change, right? And it's to do with time. And the actual rate is in terms of time, right? Okay, calculate the volume of water which is poured into the container in the first five seconds, given that k is equal to alright, now then they give you this value. So they say k is equal to, and then they put it in index form, that's fine if you want to put it in index form. I find that somewhat hard to read. Um, so I would write it with um, division instead. Okay, so you've got a rate here, and the units are cubic centimeters and seconds. Okay, now we'll have a, we'll have a thing later where we do uh, rates of change formally as to why that's seconds squared, like per second per second. But what we're really interested in is the quantity. The three is kind of the important part to me. Okay. So I could now write this, dv on dt. That's 3t squared. Okay. Right. Let's revisit what the question is. Calculate the volume of water, which is poured into the container in the first five seconds. Okay. Right. Now, if I want to do something with volume, volume, um, I can know a lot of things about volume based on this rate, okay? Because just like if you know what the derivative is, you add to differentiate, you go back to the primitive, and you'll get a function for y, right? Well, we're going to do the same thing here, it's just kind of different letters, yeah? So if I anti-differentiate, think about, okay, what, what function did this come from before? What's the primitive? It's a nice simple one. Yep. Okay, so you've got to have your constant there. Now, what does that correspond to? I wonder if you remember when I was talking about 
This is for people who were here yesterday, talking about evaluating the constant integration, right? Constant of whatever, okay. What does it refer to? Sometimes it's just a number, okay, if it's just some abstract function. But in this case, this C refers to... The initial volume of water there. Yeah, because think about this, right? Uh, initial conditions, that's when time is zero. So that's where we define our starting point, okay? So when time is zero, what volume will be the, what, what is it, a container, a tank? What is it? It's just a container, okay? The volume that's there will be zero plus C, right? Now I don't know, they don't tell me anything about how much it starts with. It might start with 50 mils or 50,000 or whatever, okay? But it doesn't matter. Can anyone tell me why? Why doesn't it matter how much I start with? Good, right. So I'm just interested in not the actual total amount, but just how much has it changed in that, what is it, five seconds? First five seconds, I think. Okay. All right, so how would you go about actually setting out and working out this answer? Maybe some of you can see it already, okay? Uh, if I want to compare the first five seconds, right, I'm going to say, well, what's it going to be at the beginning? And we just said this, right? When t equals zero, the volume of water will be, and I'm just going to, I'll write this out long here so you can see what I'm doing. It will be zero cubed plus c, right? So there's going to be c, what units am I in? Mills? Cubic centimeters? I mean cubic centimeters. Right, okay. So that's how many cubic centimeters of water are in there. I don't know what it is, but don't need to know, right? If I want to know what happens in the first five seconds, now I'll compare it with what happens after that time has elapsed, right? So when I go straight to that value, the volume is now going to be this. Now you can see why I don't need to know what the constant is, okay? Because all I'm interested in is this actual change, okay? So therefore, in the first five seconds, um, 125 cubic centimeters of water has poured in, flowed in. Okay, not whatever. Okay, yeah. I don't think so. I think it's I think it's plain enough from there. It's a nice simple function. Um, okay, so can you see how I set it out? Right? Does that make sense? Um, in this case, we didn't need to work out what the constant was because of the particular kind of question that it was. Okay.